Buenos dias, soy Cindy. Yo vivo aquí en Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sydney, and I live here in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am an English teacher. I teach both at a school and online. Um, at the school, I'm a preschool teacher. So I work at a bilingual school. It's very close to kind of like a daycare. All of the children are under six years old. And my class, our age group is three to four years old. So our school year actually just ended yesterday and today is a holiday here. So I'm just kind of getting up and starting to get myself together this morning because today is Corpus Christi. So I will give you guys a little tour of my apartment and where I live. I live here alone um, since December. When I first arrived in here in August, I actually lived with the family um, and now I live here by myself. So I'll leave a question box here so you guys can start asking questions and let's look around. So this is my kitchen. Pretty much pretty simple for one person. The stove and the refrigerator are not included so that has to be bought separately when you move into places here so that's my kitchen over here but i have a couple of chairs until i get a table just my couch um, and then we have my window I'm trying to get a tv stand too my tv and this is my living room so this is my bathroom my shower my mirror, my sink, my toilet. Funny story about my bathroom this morning. So this morning, the light bulb actually blew out um, <laughs> right before, of course, all of this. So I guess you guys will be coming to the store with me later <laughs> and getting a light bulb for my bathroom. <laughs> so this is my bedroom, pretty simple, just pretty much just a bed, um, little side table here. Um, and yeah, it's my bedroom. And my closets are actually pretty big too, honestly. Um, they go, they have these double doors, but pretty good closet too. So I'm back home now and now I'm going to put all of my expenses and basically what I'm spending every month while living here. So I did not post my online um, salary because that's something that fluctuates very often. So this is a good first question to start on. What made you decide to teach in the Dominican Republic? So I have always loved the Dominican Republic. I've never been here before now, but it was just something about tropical weather, island, good food. And after doing more research, of course, on the place, I knew I wanted to teach in a city. So I chose the capital and started job hunting through there. But but I basically have always been attracted to islands and um, definitely here. <laughs> I think this question is really interesting about teaching young students and if I wish my students were older. <laughs> um, long story, but shortly after completing my TEFL course in 2016, early 2017, I actually ended up getting a job shortly after teaching college students. I was teaching them English. They were basically immigrant families. Um, it was in a classroom and um, I liked it. I did it for three years there. But I had worked with children in my past and nothing really compares to me in my opinion of working with children. They're always so fun. They put a smile on your they always put a smile on your face and teaching adults or just older students they're a little more set in their ways especially when it comes to their language which makes it a little more difficult for them and the teacher 
Also a good question. The short answer is basically yes. I have um, full coverage through my employer. So I would like to definitely answer both of these questions. How did you find your job? And do you ever feel unsafe in Santo Domingo? So finding my job, um, ICA actually helped me a lot with finding my job. I narrowed it down to the countries I wanted to live in. I had my top three or four countries. This was my number one. So my advisor gave me a list of schools that were in the Dominican Republic and I definitely wanted to be in the city. So I narrowed it down to the schools that were here in the city. And I kind of old fashioned just sent an email with who I was. I sent my resume and basically asking if they were interested in hiring an English an English teacher. Um, and I got a response back from one school, the school that I'm working at. So it pretty much worked out pretty nicely for me. So the second part of the question is about the safety. And I know Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic kind of has like this thing about a lot of people feel is not very safe. So I think it's important to talk about. The one thing I'll say is you always want to remember, you know, this is a big city. So there are certain things in any big city in the world throughout the world that you just don't want to do, you know, as in like have your phone out or walk alone at night and things. Coming from Chicago, I really don't feel that anything um, that's irreplaceable is a threat. So if they take my phone, I can get another phone. But in Chicago, it's more like my life. I can't get another one of those, you know. But overall, I never have to go to a grocery store or movie theater and feel like something bad is going to happen. Um, and I had that fear more so when I was living back at home. I will say that I don't really walk anywhere. I mean, I really don't walk anywhere, especially not by myself. I usually take Ubers or ride shares everywhere I go. Um, I'm never really alone if I have to do that either. So. So this is a good question. What do you do while the kids are on break? Do you still get paid? Hmm. <laughs> I honestly don't have that long of a break because I decided to work the summer school program. So the summer school will be starting um, in about a week, actually. And of course, I'll be getting paid. Um, the online job, of course, helps. Um, I'll have a little bit more availability in the summertime. So that's also another income that I have if I'm not working. I definitely want to answer this one. Have you experienced any hurricanes or earthquakes? I have not experienced any hurricanes. I'm, I'm kind of in a hurricane season right now, but I did experience the earthquake that happened in Haiti. Um, um, it was like late last year. It wasn't anything big, but it was just early in the morning and I kind of felt my bed do like a, like a rock, like a gentle rock. <laughs> It was early and it was like a Saturday, so I went back to sleep. And then when I woke up and got on social media, everybody was talking about this earthquake. And I was like, oh my God, that's why my bed was moving, like kind of back and forth. So that's kind of small, but. What was the process like when looking for housing? So let's talk about my housing story. <laughs> So my boss at my job has basically been really helpful through all of this. She's the one who has helped me find an apartment the time I was living with the family and the apartment that I'm living in right now. So she's the best. <laughs> So the plan was actually for me to live with another teacher um, and then something happened with the apartment like a week before I moved here and my supervisor ended up finding a family who was looking for a roommate. So I lived there for about four months and it just didn't work out um, with me and my roommate. Um, it was really her house. So things just didn't work out and I ended up you know, telling my supervisor like, I need help. <laughs> So luckily my landlord is actually a personal friend to my supervisor. So, you know, he was, you know, telling her, um, hey, I have this um, apartment. The lady will be moving out uh, very soon. And she was like, we'll take it. Is there any scope for non-native speakers? Good question. So basically, I'm the kind of person, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm always going to try to communicate, make sure I communicate and can communicate with the people here. Um, because I'm in a big city, it's a little easier to find someone who speaks English. But what I have noticed is um, if you don't um, speak Spanish or at least enough to communicate, sometimes they kind of will look at that and, and 
kind of semi take advantage of you in some areas so be careful but I because I'm in a bilingual school my supervisor is bilingual I have a classroom assistant she's bilingual and the grade above mine they actually they actually learn English as well so that teacher is also bilingual so if I ever need any help at work I'm usually um, pretty good with asking so this is a, also a really good question. I'll answer about two more questions before I um, show a little bit more around the city. So for anyone who has ever struggled with their mental health or is into that, um, you know, taking care of themselves, I know like what my triggers are. And for me personally, it's always been about my environment. And so far I feel really good here. I don't feel like there's I don't feel like there's anything to really make my anxiety a trigger or me having that like depressed feeling like the things I struggle with in the past. So I would say here, I would say here, so far so good. And um, I do have insurance, so that's a good thing if I ever need to um, start going to a professional again. to wrap this up soon I hope I can be heard right now um, because I'm going to eat and finish my night <laughs>